God bless my friends and welcome into the Gospel Music Jude Box. Hey, I'm your host, the evangelist bishop, Brother Eddie Cheney. Hey, like it or not, believe it or not, the truth right here tonight. I mean, guess what? The reason you're not experiencing God in your life right now like you should be, well, it's not because you haven't got all of God that you could get. No, my friend, it's because God has not got all of you the truth when we come right back thank you for stopping by right here at the gospel music jude box hey you too can call in share a testimony a song a praise report or just shout howdy we'd love to hear from you pick up the phone dial one nine three one two two nine zero seven six eight and let the world know that you're not ashamed to stand and proclaim Jesus in his holy and righteous name. Give this a listen as we listen in to one of the pre-recorded testimonies or prayer requests or a song. We never know what we're going to get, but it's always good because we know God's not dead. He's alive and working actively in the lives of his children all over the world. Remember, like it or not, believe it or not, the truth right here tonight on the Gospel Music Jukebox. We'll be right back, my friends. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Hello, Brother Bishop Eddie Cheney. I love you and I'm praying for you. God bless you. This is Brother Boyd Lerman in Idaho. I've been spending some time in prayer here, and I have a message from Jesus and God to the people out there that need help, to the people that are in the elderly homes, 
in the best homes. My grandma Yomi is in an elderly home, wanting to know how much God loves them and Jesus loves them. To the drug addicts on the street, to the people that are struggling with drug addictions or in gangs, like the, the people we're working with here are in the prisons that have severe drug addictions. Jesus loves you so much. He died on the cross for you. There is hope for you. I'm just letting you know that Jesus died for you and he loves you and you can turn your life over to Jesus and he can set you free from the sins. To the people that are sick in the hospitals, there's hope for you because Jesus took your infirmities and died on the cross for you for your sicknesses and diseases and you can be healed in the name of Jesus. There's hope for all of us because Jesus died for us. And Jesus wanted me to tell the world that the people out there that aren't helping the orphans, the widows, that aren't visiting the people in the elderly homes or that don't care, that don't care for the, you know, the orphans, the widows, for the people that have been on drugs, they're not really truly his disciples, they're not showing the love of Jesus to others. And that uh, anyone who truly follows Jesus, who truly is his disciple, the world will know their disciples by their love, the, by the love for each other. John 13, 34 through 35 says we're supposed to show the love of Jesus to the world and show that we are his disciples and we should be praying for the people in the elderly homes, the rest homes, and let them know how much they, Jesus loves them and that Jesus died for them and that they'll be able to go to heaven if Jesus is their personal Lord and Savior and be with Jesus for in heaven for all of eternity. He loves them so much. Jesus loves the drug addicts and the people out on the street, even though a lot of the times the people at the churches just leave a prosperity gospel and they don't want to go out and preach to the kids that are on the drugs and the people that are addicted and to the, to, they don't want to go out and help the orphans and the widows or go to the rest homes and, and tell the, or nursing homes and tell the elderly how much people, how much Jesus loves them. A lot of times they don't want to go to the hospital and some pray for the sick. But I can assure you, anyone who truly is a disciple of Jesus will be doing these things and will be out there letting the world know about the love of Jesus and how much he cares for them. And uh, I just wanted to let the, let people know that Jesus loves you. And no, no sin is too dark. There's hope through Jesus if you'll turn your life over to him. I was controlled myself by so many different sins, anger and cursing, pornography, and Jesus set me free from those, and he's happy working with people in prisons and the orphans and widows and and uh, people that have been in gangs and on drugs. And my grandma Naomi is in an elderly home right now, and uh, she Jesus loves her so much. He loves every single person that's in that elderly home. Yeah, Jesus loves you all, and God bless you. Please turn your life over to Jesus. Amen. Turn the TV on Look at what's going wrong Politicians slinging dirt The kitchen's in the church Well, it ought not be a going on
talking to you. Yeah. I think the world needs a drink. I think you know she knows. She's been spinning. Well, praise God. God bless. Good to see Brother Stephen Mead in the house. Love you, man. All right, we got Sister Sandra Sloan in the house. Tell Brother Donnie we said, hey, looking forward to being down there in a couple of weeks, two or three weeks, give or take. We're going to be heading out, coming down your way, checking up, checking in, and just singing and praising God. I mean, look out. <laughs> God is so good, it's indescribable. Thank you for stopping by right here, guys, at the Gospel Music Jukebox. I love each and every one of you. Whether you listen in live or by way of the archive, know that we love you. We're praying for you, and we would ask that you would do the same for us right here at Saving America One Soul at a Time. Amen. We have been blessed today throughout the day. It's been an awesome day. Been on the phone, meetings about revival and things coming up in the near future. And, oh, my God, we went down to Lawrence Chapel Church of God. Down there with Pastor Mac and his lovely wife, Brenda. And, man, we just had some fellowship as our grandchildren were in a play uh, there, amen. Uh, well, we just had us a time. Whew, blessed by God, amen. Uh, so, got back, internet came back in. Internet, internet has been going in and out today, so if we lose the program, just know it's due to the internet connection. And uh, the weather is real windy here under a wind advisory so be much in prayer for us like it or not believe it or not the truth right here at the gospel music jude box hey man hey guys i mean <clears throat> the reason you're not experiencing god in your life right now like you should i mean it's not because you haven't got all of god that you can get no when you got saved you got you got it then you got god the problem is, God don't have you, all of you. Some of you are holding on to pieces of the world. Some of you even hold on to the peace of past. Uh, some of us don't forgive others that have offended us or trespassed against us. Some of us hold on to the least little things thinking that we can fix it, take care of it. But listen, we can't do nothing in ourselves. Uh, we can't even walk without Jesus holding our hands. But now I want you to listen tonight because those of you who are following Jesus simply for what? Well, you can get, huh, won't stick around when it, when the going gets tough, my friend. When God's ways conflicts with the, your ways, I'm talking to you now, they will, well, they just clash. You, 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 you will begin to feel betrayed by the shallow, um, uh, listen. If you've not counted the cost of being his child, you better believe you will turn away at the threat of sacrifice and find something else to gratify your selfish desires. If you've not counted the cost and are willing to walk away from the world in the worldly ways, look, this could cost you your very life. I'm talking about you got to love God more than you love your husband or your wife. you got to love God more than you would love your mother or your father or your sister or your brother. you got to love God more than anything or anyone. Count the cost. Uh, I'm telling you, you got to be willing to deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow after him if we're ever going to have the type of relationship we truly need with well with with our lord and savior there's some things we're going to have to say goodbye to i mean i'll give you for an instant 
You got a pencil and piece of paper, get you one. I'm going to drop some word on you right here from the oh, from the kingdom of God. Listen to me. I'm going to drop some word right in your lap, and you discern what you're to do with it. We're talking about if you're not real, if you're not born again, if you're not bathed in the blood, if you've not counted the cost uh, of being a disciple of Christ, a follower of Jesus, uh, have you died today? Do you die daily? All these things are going to be talked about, discussed uh, as we share the truth right here like it or not believe it or not ready or not jesus is coming and where will you spend eternity if you're listening tonight and you don't know jesus christ as your personal lord and savior and you meet death i promise you'll lift your eyes and torment listen listen to me the truth will set you free the truth will make you free Reach out and take a hold of the unchanging hand of the great I am. I'm talking about you must be born again or you shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven, my friend. This is real. We're running out of time. There's a soul hanging in the balance. Uh, what are you going to do with Jesus? Listen, it's not by accident that you've stopped by this little radio broadcast. No, it's by heavenly divine appointment. God's got you right where he wants you for we are the clay and he is the potter. Are you allowing God to shape you or are you trying to figure out what it is that you're to do you see faith you can't figure it out faith you can't see it you just must believe and trust do you do that do you trust god hmm food for thought you see you got your pencil i mean hey now listen if we're ever gonna have the type of relationship we truly need with jesus christ there's some things we're going to have to say bye-bye to. Bye-bye, Miss America, bye. Joe Mice. You guys remember that song, don't you? You know how to say bye-bye. Look in Matthew chapter 4, verse 9. Talking about there where Peter and Andrew left their fishing nets. They had to give up something. Huh? Do you get this? Matthew chapter 4, verse 9. Going to drop a nothing in your lap. You got them right for ash and make a couple of notes. Right here, check out Matthew 4 and 21. Talking about where James and John left their father. Come on now, write it down. Matthew chapter 4, verse 21. I want you to ask God to write his word upon the tablet of your heart, my friend. Listen, not being a hearer only, but being a doer of the word of God. I'm talking about rolling up your sleeves and getting to work down on them prayer bones. Are you who you say you are? Have you counted the cost? Uh, listen, check out Matthew chapter 9, verse 9. Yeah, where Matthew left his profession, you know, he, he had to leave his job. Uh-oh, I'm about to hit some toes. I believe I'll go to a song. We'll be right back. Uh, no, I'm going to share another test. No, song. All right, song. Song it is. All right, guys. <laughs> God's good. Okay, just because I stepped on a toe, I ain't going to leave. I mean, a lot of people, when you start talking about, listen, you may, you may, you probably will if you obey God to the fullest. There'll be a day in your life that you'll want to do something. It may be go fishing with a friend or a family member. It may be hang out and watch videos with your wife and eat popcorn on the couch. And all of a sudden, an umption arises in your heart. All of a sudden, you hear the voice of God whisper in your ear. Because he said his sheep know his voice and no other voice will they follow. And all of a sudden, you need to go pray for somebody. But you gotta, your wife don't want to go or your friend don't want to go. And all of a sudden, you've got to make a decision. Have you counted the cost? Have you picked up your cross? And are you following after Jesus? Do you desire to be Christ-like? Are you willing to give up everything? Everything? Everything, I'm talking about everything. When God calls, are you willing to walk away from the world and the worldly ways, tradition of men, and reach out and take a hold of the unchanging hand of the great I am? I'm telling you today, friends, like it or not, believe it or not, the truth uh, uh, tonight ringing in your ear. What are you going to do with Jesus? I'm talking about, listen, if you're ever going to have the type of relationship you desire uh, truly with uh, Jesus, so listen, you're going to have to wave back to some things that are in your life. Uh, do you hear me? I mean, if we're going to follow Jesus, we're going to have to leave some things behind. Do you understand this? Say, so you say you want more of God? Well, guess what? You can have it, but count the cost. 
count the cost. Listen, when Jesus stepped out of his throne in glory to come to earth and and live and die for us, you and I, he left behind all that he had. He exchanged wealth for poverty out of the ivory palace into the rude cattle shed. I'm talking about, you hear me? I'm, I, I, I mean, this is the truth. He exchanged the rulership for servanthood. I'm talking about, he says, foxes have holes and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. What an ornery. I mean, the king of glory. doesn't have a place to call home. He has no earthly security. He 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 was well he was he was loaned an accommodation. I mean if you think about it, he was loaned yeah by those who loved him. He he I mean, come on, he borrowed a coin to tell a story. He borrowed a donkey to ride into Jerusalem and fulfill prophecy. Why I mean, he was even buried in a borrowed tomb. It was just as well that he didn't need it for too long, right? I mean, he didn't need it. He knew he was leaving. He knew where he was going. He knew that he was going to do the Father's will. I mean, come on, he had nothing. Oh, but here I see his glory shining. He give up all when he come. And stood by me and you. I want you to think about it for a minute. Some of you know the story. Yeah. The death, burial, and resurrection of our precious Lord and Savior. But he had to tell the disciples to go and they would find the little colt, the little the little donkey, and to loose it and bring it, you know. Some of you know the story of how He had nowhere to lay his head. Think about it. Are you studying on it? Because those who follow him must be prepared for the same kind of road, my friend. Listen, I'm talking about no earthly security. Now, note, I haven't said no security. I said no earthly security. Every man of God that I've read about except a couple, man, they've come to a horrific death. I'm talking about when you preach the gospel, you'll be hated by the world. When you follow out of Christ and you strive to live Christ like, man, your own family will turn against you. I'm talking about your friends, your neighbors, your co-workers. They begin to make fun of you and call you holier than thou. You say that you can live. I say he's that's in me is greater than he that's in the world. And if I yield to the Holy Ghost, uh, I'm telling you that I can say no to sin. I can rebuke the devil because he that lives inside of me is greater than he that is in the world. I'm telling you, we must continue uh, to strive to be Christ-like uh, and uh, the truth. Just simply the truth. And those who follow him must be prepared for the same road. No earthly security. Now, there is security in following Jesus, all right? I'm telling you. But but it's not any earthly security. It's not the security of possessions or money or homes or such things as that. Listen, only the security of God's faithfulness. And a life beyond this is one that, well, nothing can take away. Though the Christians have nothing but to have everything. This 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 is an awesome word tonight. I pray you reach out and grab a hold of it. You see, he is more secure than any riches, more powerful uh, than any man. But the follower of Jesus... I mean, if you're going to follow Jesus and walk his road, it may well cost you everything. So count the cost. Remember, he said, whosoever loses his life for my sake shall find it. Have you lost your life for the gospel?
those who are following Jesus simply for what they can get won't stick around, my friend. When the going gets tough, when God's way conflicts with their way, they will feel betrayed by the, by the shallowness of the kind of faith that they're bringing in where everything's about, you know, me syndrome. That's what they feel betrayed about. But you need to count the cost. Have you made up your mind? Come hell or high water, you're going to hold on to the unchanging hand of the great I am. It takes determination. It takes being born again. You must be born again. Or you will in no wise enter in to the kingdom of heaven. We'll be right back. Give this a listen and be blessed in Jesus' name. Hello, Brother Bishop Eddie Cheney. I love you. I'm praying for you. God bless you. This is Brother Boyd London in Idaho. And uh, I was going to call in with my testimony. And uh, thanks so much for the prayers for all of us here. You know, my dad, Roy, passed away recently, had the stroke and the bad infections. You got to spend time with my dad, Roy, in the hospital, uh, praying for him and uh, uh, singing songs to him and reading songs to him before he passed away. And uh, I know that helped my dad out with him you doing that and with everyone doing that for him and it's sad with him gone here but then my mom Jerry got someone out she's got bronchitis and pneumonia we've been taking care of her at the house here trying to keep her out of the hospitals uh so she doesn't get the sepsis and the bad infections my dad had pneumonia too uh that my dad did because we want her to be okay and she thanks everyone for her pr your prayers and sends her love to you all she's doing just a little bit better today we're claiming her healing in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the prayers for my mom, Jerry London. She's called in at times to this testimony line. People liked her testimonies and her calls. When she's doing better here, I'm going to have her call in again and share her testimony with you all. Uh, love my mom, Jerry, a lot. And old brother Eddie and Pauline love my mom, Jerry, a lot, too. She's a great lady, and we love her a lot. And we thank God and Jesus for healing her. My testimony is that uh, I know that God is helping us here. It says in Philippians 4, 6, we don't have to be anxious about anything, but everything we can we present a request to God and he will help us. And I uh, grew up in, my, in a Christian family here, but I was controlled by pornography, lust, anger, cursing, and so many sins. Even though I went to church sometimes, I never really turned my life over to Jesus. I didn't think I could ever get the sins out of my life, but when I truly turned my life over to Jesus, confessed him as Lord. I was baptized in a lake, and I asked Jesus to set me free from sins. He did. He came into my heart and life and set me free from the pornography, the lust, the anger, the cursing, those sins, and gave me hope. And he's had me out there helping people in prisons, orphaned uh, and fatherless kids, and, and uh, people that have been in gangs on drugs, and doing a lot of good things instead. He just gave me a mission to go make disciples of all nations, to teach them to obey everything, and baptize them, and we're supposed to be in people's lives, our families, our friends, our neighbors, the people around us in the world, our brothers and sisters' lives are supposed to be teaching them what's in the Bible and encouraging one another daily. Hebrews 3, 12 through 13 says to encourage one another daily. So Jesus helped me get the sin out of my life and gave me a new mission to be in his kingdom, an ambassador for Jesus here on earth, representing Jesus to others and letting them know that there's hope. No matter how dark the sins are in your life, there's hope through Jesus. If you'll turn your life over to Jesus, Jesus died on the cross for you. He loved you so much. If you'll turn your life over to Jesus, he will set you free from the sins. He will heal you from sicknesses and diseases. He will help you. It says in the book of Matthew 13 that if we turn our heart over to Jesus, he will heal us. It says in Philippians 4, 6, we don't have to worry about anything, but we present all of our problems and trials to God, and Jesus may will help us. So please turn your life over to Jesus. Jesus, Jesus helped me, and Jesus will help you, and that's my testimony. I love Jesus. God bless you all, and have a good day. Amen. Thank you, Brother Boyd, for being faithful on those phone calls, my friend. We love you. We're praying for you and your family. Tell your mom and everyone, your sisters, that we are praying God just continue to bless. Brother, we love you. Hey, good to see Sister Shirley Collins in the room. Shirley in the house. God bless you, sis. We're praying for you and your family there in Pikeville, Kentucky. May God continue to bless you, sis, and your family as you continue to be a blessing to others. Thank you for taking time out. All of you that have took 15 minutes today and prayed for this ministry, Saving America One Soul at a Time, and all the outreach that we do here. 
through the Gospel Music Jude Box and the Soul Filling Station Worship Center and Project Reach Out. We thank you from the bottom of our heart. May God just open up the windows of heaven and bless each and every one of you, my friends. All right, like it or not, believe it or not, the truth right here on the Gospel Music Jude Box. Hey, did you know there in Luke chapter 14, Jesus lays out the terms of discipleship? I mean, come on, there were great crowds following him everywhere. Uh, everyone loved the miracles, the healing, the free food. I mean, come on, Jesus was cool. And talk of the town and the latest fad, but he knew their hearts. He knew they desired the benefits of what he did rather than un an understanding of who he, who he was. They loved his gifts, not the life he was calling them to. So he explained what it takes to be one of his followers. You want more of God? Do you desire to follow out of Jesus? You ready to pick up your cross and follow Jesus? If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whosoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you desiring to build a tire does not first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king goeth out to encounter another king in war will not sit down first and deliberate whether he is able with tens of thousands to meet him who comes against him with twenty thousands? And if not, while the other is yet a great way off. He sends a delegation and asks for terms of peace. So therefore, any one of you who does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. Look in the book of Luke chapter 14. You want to read verses 26 down to about 33. Just read the word of God. Ask God to write his word upon the tablet of your heart. Help you not Listen, help you to not only be a hearer, but a doer of the word of God. Jesus said in a lot, uh, uh, listen, I mean, come on. He quickly put an end to the idea that uh, he offered some kind of welfare program. The truth. Although the, the gift of eternal life is free to anyone who asks, just, you know, John 3, 16, the asking requires a transfer of ownership. Look at uh, Luke 9, uh, verse 23, Galatians 5 and 24. Counting the cost means recognizing and agreeing to some of the terms first and following Christ, my friend. We cannot simply follow our own uh, inclinations. We cannot follow him and the world's way at the same time. Look at Matthew chapter 7. There, uh, yeah, thank you, Lord. Verses 13 and 14. Follow him may mean, listen, following him may mean we lose relationships, dreams, material things, or even our own lives. Once again, I say those of you who are following Jesus for, for just simply what you can get, you're, you're not going to stick around when the going gets tough, when God's ways conflict with your ways. I mean, you will. You'll feel betrayed because uh, you brought into it a, the first faith of mentality is me, me. What can I get? What Bless me. Give to me. I need this. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. The Bible says it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. I mean, come on. Jesus ended his, his description of the cost of discipleship with a, a, a breathtaking statement. Any one of you who does not yeah, does not renounce. Do you know what renounce means? Renounce all that he has. Cannot be my disciple. Look at Luke 14, chapter 14. There in the book of Luke. And, and look at verse 33. 
I mean, renouncing, listen, it may mean we give up something uh, physical, but more often it means we let go emotionally so that we, uh, so that what we possess no longer possesses us. When we become one of his, we cannot continue to belong to the world. Look at First John chapter 2, verses 15 and 17. We must make a choice, for we cannot serve both God and mamma. I want you to look at Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. Come on, you know the rich young ruler, when confronted with the choice, turned his back on Jesus. Look there in Luke chapter 18, verse uh, 18 through 25, I believe it is. Now, suppose you learned that you had been given, and, and let's, yeah, I can do it this way. Thank you, Lord. Oh, my God. This, praise God. Woo. Just suppose for a moment that you learned that you'd been given an all expense paid condo on a beach in, let's say, Tahiti, man, complete with the airfare, a car, food, and a maid. And, and I mean, you could brag about your new lifestyle, you plan for it. Dream about it, but until you pack up and leave your current home, the new life is never really yours. You see, you cannot live in, let's say, Tahiti and your current hometown at the same time. Now, many people listen. Many people approach Christianity the same way. They love the idea of eternal life, escaping hell, and having Jesus as, as at their beck and call. But they are not willing to leave, well, the lifestyle they now live. I mean, their desires, the lifestyle, and sinful habits are too precious to them. Come on. The fruit tells what kind of tree it is. Their lives may exhibit a, 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 a token uh, change. I mean, listen. They may starting to attend church or giving up a, a major sin, but they want to retain ownership of everything else. Look in Luke 14. Listen, we cannot earn salvation by lifestyle change or any other good deed. Ephesians 2 and uh, verses 8 and 9 there. Were, but but, but you got to know when we choose to follow Christ, we are, well, releasing control of our lives. When Jesus is in control, pure living results. Look in 1 John 3, verses 4 through 10. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. I mean, in Jesus' parable of the sower, it was only the soil that allowed the seed to put down roots and bear fruit that was called good. If we're going to be disciples of Christ, we must count the cost of following him. Have you counted the cost? If we're ever going to have the type of relationship we truly, truly desire with Jesus, well, there's some things we're going to have to say bye-bye to. You can't serve two masters. Choose you this day. This day, this hour, this moment, right now, right there where you're at, get things settled between you and God. It's called a made-up mind. It's called dying. It's called decrease that he may increase. It's called surrendering your will over to his will to be done in your life. Listen, you got to come to that place and realize that we're a sinner in need of a Savior We're running out of time. And their souls hanging in the balance. What are you going to do with Jesus? He's on the main line. Tell him what you want. It's as hard to get people to pray as it is to get them to call a testimony line. It's like pulling a tooth. It's like people dreading to go to the dentist. Can you be faithful with 15 minutes a day, once a day to pray? Not only for this ministry, but for your family, your lost loved ones, your friends, your community, your co-workers. I'm talking about crying out for America. I'm talking about can you be faithful once a day for 15 minutes? Can you be faithful to make one phone call a day and share your testimony? 
Simply pick up the phone and dial one nine three one two two nine zero seven six eight. Sing a song. Share a prayer request. Pray for the needs of others. We're giving you opportunity to do something for the kingdom of God. We'll be right back. Jesus on the mainland, tell him what you want. Jesus on the mainland, tell him what you want. Jesus on the mainland, tell him what you want. You can call him up and tell him what you want. You can call him up, call him up. Tell him what you want. Call him up, call him up. Tell him what you want. Call him up, call him up. Tell him what you want. Tell him I said, tell him what you want. Hey Jesus on that main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus on that main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus on that main line. Tell him what you want. Tell him I said. And you wanna get well, tell him what you want. If you're sick and you wanna get well, tell him what you want. Tell him I said, tell him what you want. Hey Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Tell him I said, tell him what you want. Busy. Tell him what you want, his line ain't never busy. Tell him what you want, his line ain't never busy. Tell him what you want, tell him I said, tell him what you want. Hey, Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want Tell him I said tell him what you want You can call him up Tell him what you want Like it or not, believe it or not The truth, right here, right now If you die in sin You cannot be where Jesus is. Sin cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. You cannot serve two masters. You must make a choice. For today is the day of salvation. What are you going to do with Jesus? Bottom line, if you're living in a, a homosexual lifestyle, you're not saved. If you're practicing lesbianism and ungodly uh, sexual acts, you're not saved. If you are a child molester raping children, you're not saved. I don't care how much you go to church and shout and jump and sing and get your feel good on. Without being born again, you shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. You must be born again. I'm talking about you got to die that you may live. I'm talking about like it or not, believe it or not, the truth. What are you going to do with Jesus. Uh, the truth will make you free, my friend. It'll it'll help you if you'll receive it this night. Know this, that if you'll run to Jesus with a broken heart and a contrite spirit, he will in no wise cast you out. He will take you, shape you, and make you into what he would have you to be. I'm talking about you've got to give it up uh, and give it over to God. You've got to, t to get on the potter's wheel, come to the place and acknowledge and receive and know the fact that we are the clay and he is the potter. Potter. Yes, we're sinners in need of a Savior. You must repent and turn from your wickedness or you're going to miss heaven. If you die without accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, if you die without being born again, if you die without humbling yourself down under the mighty hand of God, I'm telling you, you're going to miss heaven and make hell your home. I'm talking about where all liars and whoremongers go. I'm talking about where the devil and his legions of little demons are going to be cast out. 
for eternity. Uh, where will you spend eternity? Oh, you may fool me. You may fool mama. You may fool your wife, your neighbor, your children. But honey, you ain't fooling God. God knows the truth. Uh, do you hear me? If you see your brother in need and shut up your bowels of compassion, how dwelleth the love of God in you? We're talking about like it or not, believe it or not, the truth. Uh, just because you pack a Bible don't mean you saved. Uh, just because you give tithes to a ministry don't mean you're right with God. Uh, many are going to say on that day, uh, on that great and dreadful day, but Lord, Lord, did we not do uh, all these wonderful things in thy name? Did we not cast out demons in thy name? My God, didn't you hear what he said? He's going to say, but on that day, listen to me, I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. We're talking about sin. We're talking about those of you that are living behind the mask. We're talking about those of you uh, that don't want to be, uh, uh, well, you don't want to be in the light. You see, the word of God says man would rather walk in darkness than to receive the light. I'm telling you, the light has come, and there's hope for you tonight. If you're living in sin, if you sin sick, honey, listen, there's hope for you. What time your heart's beating, what time you got life, call out to the light. And Jesus Christ is the life. He's the way and the truth. There's no other way to get to the Father except through and by the Son. Listen, you can't buy your way in. You can't work your way in. You must be born again. Honey, when you get born again, if you live past the moment, the breath that you say, Lord, I surrender, I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth, honey, you're going to have an umption, a desire being led by the Spirit of God. When you baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire, you've got a desire to check on the widows and the orphans. You've got to burn inside of you to share the gospel, to go out and compel those that are lost and undone without God, to get into the safety of the ark. You've got a burn that's burning with inside you. It's called the anointing of God. It's called being baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire. Honey, you can't be quiet. You can't keep it down. You can't shut it off because it's not in your control to do so. But it is our Heavenly Father. Do you hear me tonight? My goodness, grab a hold of this word. Because Jesus said his word is spirit and life. The truth will make you free. Reach out, my friends. Take a hold of the unchanging hand of the great I am. You see, if you know to do good and you do it not to you, it is sin. If you die in sin, you can't be with Jesus. Listen, if you lie for the simplest of reasons... It's still a lie, and lying is a sin. If you con, crook, take advantage, if you misuse people, honey, you're in sin. Listen, you may, you may try to justify your sin. You may, you may try to justify talking about others, and you may try to twist the word of God, but God knows your heart. He knows the truth. Uh, do you hear me today? And sin cannot go where Jesus is. We'll be right back. Can't take a heart that broken, make it over again. But I know a man who can. I can't take a soul that's in sick, make it white as the snow.
will come the troubled sea But I know a man who can I can't cause blind eyes to open Or make the lane to walk again Like it or not, believe it or not, the truth right here on the Gospel Music Jude Box. Hey, thank you for stopping by. Want to shout howdy to everyone over in the chat room. My God, we love you guys. You're awesome prayer warriors. Thank you for your prayers. Know that we here at Saving America One Soul at a Time are praying for you and your families. We do thank God for each and every one of you. Hey, just the truth. As long as you uh, allow people to run over top of you, treat you like dirt, say nothing about it, and, uh, you know, they'll love you. Yeah, they will. I mean, well, they really won't. Yeah, the truth is they really don't love you or they wouldn't be doing that to begin with. But what it is, if you don't speak up against sin and you just leave them alone, you know, you just say, well, come whenever you want to, do whatever you want to, even though they've told you that God told them to do some things, but they don't do them things. You know, the Word of God says, to mark them that cause division amongst you. I mean, come on. What do you think? God talked to hear his head rattle? Or did he know some was going to cause division amongst you? Come on. It's time to get real. It's time. It, listen, you got to grow up if you expect to go up. It's time to get off of the milk and into the meat, into the word of God. It's time that we realize that we are held accountable one to another. Listen, we're joint together. My God, when you see a brother fall and you try to help him up with the truth, I ain't going to give you. Listen, I'm I'm not going to pity you because you're down in a mud hole. No, I love you enough. I'm going to jerk you up in the name of Jesus, dust you off, and tell you to quit doing it. Quit laying there. Quit wallowing. Quit crying. Quit complaining. Quit talking about how everybody's abused you. Quit talking about how everybody's hurt you. Quit talking about how everybody's let you down. Quit talking about how nobody does nothing for you. <laughs> I'm telling you tonight that if you've counted the cost and you picked up your cross and following out of Jesus, uh, you must decrease that he may increase. I, I'm talking to you now. Listen to me. Quit looking around the room like it's somebody else, honey. This word is for you. If the, the, he that has ears, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the church tonight. I'm telling you, it's time to grow up if you expect to go up. Uh, uh, the crybaby days are gone. They're done. They're done. You've been hanging around the Word of God for many years. You've been listening to different ministers and different singing groups, and now it's time, it's time, it's time, it's time for you. It's time for you. It's time for you. Do you not get this? It's time for you to be a doer of the Word of God, not a hearer only. It's time for you to apply the Word of God into your life. Uh, do you believe you're healed? Stand on the promise. I don't care what no doctor tells you. I don't care what no preacher tells you. I don't care what no one says to you. I'm telling you, if you according unto your faith so be it unto you this night if you apply the word of God into your life I'm telling you you can walk in victory but you got to give up the world and the worldly ways yeah count the cost I'm talking about striving to be Christ like I'm talking about walking in the prosperity and health I'm talking about walking in an anointing that the devil himself cannot pluck you out of the hands of God I'm talking about a place where you can stand still and watch the glory and the salvation of God 
work in your life and in the lives of your family members. I'm telling you, I'm talking about the promises of God to those that walk upright before God. He will withhold no good thing. Do you hear me? It's God's pleasure to bless his children. I said, but everybody that packs a Bible don't belong to God. I said, everybody that claims they saved, they're not right. They are wolves in sheep clothing among us and we must stand up on the truth that we proclaim the gospel of the good news to a lost and dying world. Honey, a hypocrite is a hypocrite. A liar is a liar. I'm telling you, you gotta call it what it is. If the tree is bearing rotten apples, you gotta do some pruning on the tree. I'm talking about the winds blowing. There's a shaking going on in the body of Christ because God is getting ready to call his children out of here, honey. Time is a winding down and the tree has been dunged around. It's had fertilizer around it. Some have come by and watered it. But there's some dead limbs are hanging on it. Listen to me. You must be connected to the body of Christ. You Listen, you've been drafted in. My God, that we may cry Abba. Do you hear me tonight? I'm telling you tonight that if you're not born again, bathed in the blood, if you have not died to this world and accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you will in no wise enter into the kingdom of God. Do you hear me? It's the truth anyway. Whether you like it or not ain't got a thing to do with it. Like it or not, believe it or not, it's still the truth. Uh, let the word of God be truth uh, and every man be a liar. Do you hear me tonight? You've got a choice to make. Uh, now you can continue to do what you've been doing and you're going to continue to get what you've been getting. Uh, or you can reach out and grab a hold of that unchanging hand of the great I am and say this night I repent of my soul sins. Uh, this night uh, I renounce the world and the worldly ways uh, and I am going to be uh, what God would have me to be no matter what nobody says no matter what nobody does uh, whether anybody helps me or not. Uh, listen to me complainer whiner and murmur. You're lost in the wilderness uh, through and by your complaining. You're going to be just like the children of Israel was. Uh, everyone above the age of 20 died off and did not get to go into the promised land. You're going to want under a lamp and complain and murmur so much that you're going to miss uh, the blessings of God uh, that God has up in store for you. You must uh, uh, begin to get your eyes locked on Jesus. Uh, don't you look to the right nor the left. Uh, I'm talking about remain on that narrow path. Uh, seek ye out the old path and stay there on my friend. I don't care what nobody else does. I don't care what nobody else says. I don't care what nobody else's opinions are. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God's not dead. He's alive and he lives forevermore. I know that he's working actively in the lives of his children of the body of Christ. And I know that he himself has joined the body of Christ together. God will place you into the body. He knows where the gifts lie. He knows where the, the strength is. He has put you right where he would have you to be. But now there's many just kicking and a fussing and a whining and a crying. My God, I don't want to be an assistant. I don't want to be a janitor. I don't want to be a laborer. Listen, those of you that think you are the great, uh, those of you that think you're the greatest, uh, uh, listen, you're the least. You're a servant. I'm a servant. Do you hear me? I'm a servant to the body of Christ. Uh, those that desire to be first will be last. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, you hear me now. And the last shall be first. You hear me now, ain't you? I'm talking about you've got to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. I'm talking about you cannot desire heavenly things and earthly things. Uh, listen, if you'll seek ye out the kingdom of God and his righteousness, uh, honey, he knows everything you got need of, and he will add them unto you. For if he takes care of the lilies of the fields and he clothes them, uh, honey, he knows when the sparrow falls. Uh, do you not think he'll take care of his children? Uh, you're worth more than any sparrows. Do you hear me? If you've accepted Jesus Christ, uh, if you've been born to him, bath in the blood for whosoever will are you for whosoever will have you accepted Jesus Christ uh, this day is your personal Lord and Savior I'm not talking about somebody told you you were saved I'm talking about you know you saved uh, I'm talking about you know uh, when you died and when Jesus resurrected you just like when he called Lazarus uh, uh, he called your name and you heard him uh, I'm talking about a change that you can't describe uh, but you can't hide it uh, because now you're like
like a light that lights up the city. Honey, it can't be hid. I'm talking about uh, you can't quench the spirit because he that lives in you is greater than he that lives in the world. I'm talking about you've got to burn uh, to do something for the kingdom of God that is uncontrollable. It may cost you your job. It may cost you your wife. It may cost you your husband. It may cost you your family members. But I can tell you if you lose your life for the gospel's sake, you shall gain it. I can tell you there's not a man that's give up land, home, family that hasn't been blessed in this life and the life to come. You want more than you live less. Do you hear me? You decrease that he may increase. If you pay attention to the book of Job, Job decreased as he lost everything he thought was valuable to him. As he lost his family, his land, his cattle, his, his finances, he lost it all. But in the end, I said in the end, I say it again, in the end, God blessed him with more in the end than he had in the beginning. When you decrease and you allow God to increase in your life, and I know it looks like pure hell has broke out against you. You feel like nobody cares for you. You feel like nobody will pray for you. You feel like nobody will even come by and fellowship with you. Honey, you're decreasing and God is increasing. My God, stand up and somebody, thank God, somebody raise up your holy hands and begin to praise God. Somebody put your hand in the hand of the man. When I'm close to heaven And he lived his life with two kids and a wife Well, you do what you must do But he showed me enough of what it takes To get me through London and Idaho, we love you all, we're praying for you, and God bless you, and uh, I just called in and talked about the need to share testimonies and to be a doer of the word, I wanted to call in and say a prayer for us all, uh, 
We really appreciate the prayers for us here. My dad, Roy London, had a bad stroke, got infections, and passed away and left me here to take care of uh, my mom, Jerry, who's got sick of bronchitis and pneumonia, my grandma, Naomi, who's 95 and pretty much bedridden, and my sister, Anna, has schizophrenia. We're praying for her to be healed. She's bedridden, too. And so we've been taking care of everyone. We need prayers for everyone to be healed and for my mom, Jerry, to be healed from that bronchitis and pneumonia. She got pretty sick. We've been taking care of her at the house. The prayers are helping her a little bit. She thanks everyone for the prayers, and we're claiming she's going to be healed in the name of Jesus. And uh, I want to thank anyone who sent us any financial help here or cards and stuff here because we need it and uh, really appreciate it. And I want to say a prayer for us all right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to come to you in prayer. Thank you for Jesus dying on the cross for our sins and for our sicknesses and diseases. Thank you, Father, no matter how dark our sins are that are in our life, or no matter what we're facing, situations and challenges here, like my dad dying on us and leaving us with all of me with all these people to take care of here, we always have hope in the name of your son, Jesus. There's hope for anyone, hope for the drug addict, the drug addicts on the street, hope for my grandma Naomi and the people in the nursing homes. There's hope because Jesus died for them and Jesus loves them. It says in Philippians 4, 6, we don't have to be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, we can present our requests to you. I want to pray right now for you to help my family, help us to be able to make it with my dad passing away, with our financial problems and bills you left us here. Touch my mom, heal my mom, help my mom get to live. We proclaim that she will live and declare the works of God. We proclaim that we will all live and will declare the works of God, and I command the devil away from us all. I command any sicknesses and diseases away from us all in the name of Jesus. I claim that we are all healed, my mom, all of us. Brother Eddie, his wife Pauline, anyone hearing this, we claim that we are healed by the striped spoons in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. He just took our, he just bore our sicknesses on the cross. Matthew 8, 17, Isaiah 53, 4 through 5, Psalm 103, you forgive all of our iniquities, heal all of our diseases, and redeem our life from destruction. Father, thank you for healing and helping us all. Help us not to sin. Forgive our sins. Help us to go out there and do good and make disciples of all nations. Teach them to obey everything and baptize them. Help us to help those orphans and widows and the people in the prisons and the hospitals and do the things that Jesus tells us to do. Be, help us to be doers of the word so we can help other people and have our sins forgiven by your grace and be welcomed into heaven because Jesus does call us to be doers of the word, to take up our cross, deny ourselves daily, and to lose our life for the gospel. Thank you, Father, so much for healing and helping anyone hearing us and facing trials and challenges. Think we don't have to worry because you will help us and deliver us and we will overcome. Thank you for helping us to overcome. And I pray this prayer in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you all and have a good day.
Amen. I want to give a big shout out to my daughter-in-law, Crystal Cheney. She says everyone uh, to please pray uh, for her uh, stepmom and her dad. Please say, uh, please say, God break the chains and the damage that has been done. Please, God intervene. As we agree with Crystal Cheney, as we pray. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, you have heard the cry of one of your children. And Lord, I, I, I know that only you can fix what is broke. And Lord, we bring this and this family up to you, Lord, knowing that nothing is impossible with you. I know that it may seem to be impossible with man, but God, we know that nothing is impossible with you. Lord, we put this family in your care and your trust in your word as we stand upon your promises. Lord, we just ask that your will be done in their lives as you break the chains and the damage that has been done. Please, God, intervene as we agree with Sister Crystal Cheney. We do pray in the name of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And amen. With Jesus on the main line, praise God. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Well, uh, hello, you've got the gospel music jukebox. Who do we have on that end? Praise God. Praise God. This is a, a weather to fly, fly a kite in, ain't it? <clears throat> the wind about to blow us away down here in this little building. Yeah, the wind's getting rough up at the house. I hear you. What are you into this evening, Pastor Eddie Garrett? Well, we're just sitting here, and JoJo said he was on the radio. I didn't know nothing about him, so I thought I'd better call in and let everybody know that I was there today, and the Internet was down, but I just wanted to call in and let everybody know that I'm still praying for him. Amen. We've seen a lot of good things happen today. Uh, <clears throat> the children and stuff got together with my wife on birthday. It went good. Amen. And then we went and seen a marvelous Christmas program that the uh, Church of the, uh, where the um, Lawrence Chapel Church of Lawrence God. Lawrence Chapel Church of God, yeah, uh, with Pastor Mike. Uh, we went up our this evening in fellowship with him today, tonight, and just wanted to call in and to had a wonderful time. Them kids done a great job, great fellowship, and I just wanted to call in and say thank God for everything. Well, we sure thank you for taking time to call, and we love you. We love you too, and we love everybody on the radio tonight. And just remember me and uh, Vicky and Pryor. We'll do it. And once again, tell her again, happy birthday from all of us here at Saving America, one soul at a time. All right, I'll do it. Saving America said happy birthday, honey. Thank you, she said. All right, I'm going to get off here. Sound like a tow clock trying to get in my throat. I hear you, brother. We love you, man. All right, we love you guys. <laughs> Bye-bye. Ooh, Bye -bye. praise God. Amen and amen. Oh, call him up, call him up, tell him what you want. Tell him I said, tell him what you want. Hey, Jesus on my main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on my main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on my main line, tell him what you want.
Once again, brother boy, wow, I love you, man, and we're praying for you, and may God continue to bless you, my friend, as you continue to be a blessing to others. Hey, uh, Crystal Cheney here in the chat room says, pray that God just absolutely shakes her dad's world from the top to the bottom for salvation. Devil, you're a liar. Leave 
my family alone. In the name of Jesus, you have to go in the name of Jesus. Amen. As we stand in agreement, in agreement with her, as she stands upon the promises and the word of God, speaking the truth, and the truth will make you free. Amen. All right, guys, give this a listen, and we'll be right back. There's a lighthouse on the hillside And it overlooks life's sea And when I'm tossed, you know It sends out a light A light that I might see And the light that shines in darkness will safely lead me on If it wasn't for that old lighthouse My ship would sail no more Now everybody that lives round us They say why don't Tear that old lighthouse down The big ships Don't sail by this way And there's no use In that old thing standing around Then my mind goes back To that stormy night When just in time Thank God I saw It was that light from that old lighthouse And it still stands there today I thank God for the lighthouse I owe my life to Him For Jesus is the lighthouse Brother Boyd London in Idaho, we love y'all, we're praying for you, God bless you, and thanks for keeping us all in prayer this year, uh, my mom Jerry got pretty sick, she had pneumonia here, we've been busy taking care of her, and she thanks everyone for the prayers for her, and uh, sends her love to you all, and uh, we really appreciate everyone helping us out with the uh, cards and financial support that was sent here, as my dad Roy passed away recently, had a bad stroke and got infections, and my mom got worn out and got sick also, so we really appreciate the prayers for all of us here, and mm-hmm. And i um, tell you, the prayers help people. Uh, First Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 says we're supposed to pray without ceasing. So please keep us in prayers. We all need to be praying for each other. Hebrews 3, 12 through 13 says we're supposed to encourage one another daily. It says in the book of Revelation, they overcame by the word of their testimonies. Please call 931-229-0768. Share your testimony. Help us all overcome. Pray for us. We need prayers. 
I want to read some great scriptures here, Psalm 86, 1 through 2. A prayer of David, hear me, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Guard my life, for I am faithful to you, Savior, servant who trusts in you. You are my God, have mercy on me, for I call you all day long. Bring joy to your servant, for I put my trust in you. You, O Lord, are forgiving and good, abounding in love to all. I call upon you, hear my prayer, O Lord, listen to my cry for mercy. When I'm in distress, I call upon you because you answer me. Among God's ears is none like you, Lord, nor deeds can compare with yours. All the nations you made will come and worship before you, Lord. They will bring glory to your name. For you are great and you marvel as deeds you alone are God. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may rely on your faithfulness. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. I will praise you, Lord, my God. Follow my heart and glorify your name forever. And uh, here's some more great scriptures. Nam 1, the Lord is good, a refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who trust in him. Luke 18.7, Jesus replied, what is impossible, men, if possible, with God. Nam 1.7, the Lord is good, a refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who trust in him. Psalm 55.22, cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. So remember to cast your cares on Jesus. Jesus will help you. And uh, remember to call in and share your testimonies. And... Uh, Help everyone overcome by your, our prayers for each other. And again, we thank you so much for the prayers for my mom who's been sick here and for all of us. And thanks so much again for the people that have sent us cards and financial support here. And I want to read something. No matter where you're at in life, someone needs to hear the word of your time. Someone needs to hear that God's grace is for them. Someone needs to hear their darkest sins are not too dark for God's light. Someone needs to hear there's hope. Someone needs to hear peace and them. Someone needs to hear about a second chance through Jesus without us stepping out and doing our part. Who's going to tell them? And I'm telling you that. I had bad sins in my life. Jesus helped me get those out. We've seen other people have been in prisons, have drug addictions, repent of sins. I'm telling you, Jesus loves you. No matter how dark your sins are, you can repent and turn to Jesus. He will heal you from sicknesses and diseases and sins. And Jesus loves you. He died on the cross for you. So please, you have a second chance through Jesus. No matter how bad the sins are, please turn your life over to Jesus. He loves you, and Jesus will heal you and help you. And uh, thanks again for the prayers for us all. We love you all. We'll be praying for you. Thanks for praying for all of us. Have a good day. Amen. We need our spirit filled preacher to teach us right from wrong. We need our old fashioned seed who will pray all night long. We need some good gospel singing to help us go another mile. The church will try hard and help us go a little while. It's the word that I Oh.
brother Boy Bonded in Idaho. God bless you all. We're, we're praying for you. Thanks for the prayers for us here. My mom, Jerry, ended up getting pretty sick uh, with pneumonia and stuff, so we've been busy taking care of her, and uh, she thanks you so much for the prayers for her, and uh, we thank everyone for the prayers, and uh, I was just going to call in and encourage people to call in and share their testimonies. Call 931-229-0768 and share your testimony. Let God and Jesus know what the, uh, and the world know what what's going on in your life and how God's helping you. They overcame by the word of their testimony, and we need to encourage our brothers and sisters daily from Hebrews 3, 12 through 13. So it's very important. Uh, someone needs to hear they're worth your time. Someone needs to hear that God's grace is for them. Someone needs to hear their darkest sins are not too dark for God's life. Someone needs to hear there's hope. Someone needs to hear peace can come. Someone needs to hear about a second chance through Jesus without stepping out and doing our part. Who's going to tell them? And I'm telling you, there's a second chance through Jesus no matter how dark your sins are, Jesus helped me turn away from so many sins, and he's helped other people turn away from so many sins. We've been working with people in prisons that have drug addictions and severe sin problems, and uh, we've seen them turn their lives over to Jesus. And please turn your life over to Jesus. He will help you. Let me read an encouraging scripture. This could even be a great scripture to the people that are in the elderly homes, to the uh, people like my grandma Naomi, who's in a nursing home, an elderly home right now. Isaiah 40, 28 through 31. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is an everlasting God. He is uh, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary. His understanding as no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even the youths grow tired and weary, and the young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength, and they will soar like wing, soar on wings like the eagles. They will run and not grow weary, and they will walk and not grow faint. And we can just have God helping us and giving us strength in our life. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And Father, right now I want to pray in the name of Jesus for you to strengthen and help anyone hearing this. Maybe there are people like my grandma in the uh, elderly homes. We claim her healing in the name of Jesus and claim their healing. If they're feeling sick, we claim their healing. Give them your strength to make it through each of their days. Help them know how much Jesus loves you. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do everything through Christ who strengthens me. And we pray for all of the people in the nursing and elderly homes for them to be strengthened and to just to feel how much you love them and how much Jesus loves them and just give them strength to make it through each day and help us here give us strength and help us. We just lost my dad recently and it's been hard and please touch and heal my mom from the pneumonia. We claim her healing, claim healing of brother Eddie and his wife Pauline and uh, the Garrett's back there, uh, Pastor Eddie Garrett and Vicki Garrett, Rachel and her family, Joe and Shelly, uh, Chris and everybody who's been doing these programs, we claim our healing in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for touching and for healing and helping us all and giving us the strength of Jesus. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me as we go throughout our days. I pray this prayer in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you all and have a good day. Amen and amen. Thank you once again, Brother Boyd. Uh, we truly do thank everyone in the chat room. Thank you for stopping by. Uh, amen. Let me say, you know, because like it or not, believe it or not, telling the truth. But, um, you know, a lot of familiar faces are gone from the chat room because they get madder than hell is hot at me for preaching the truth. You see, a lot of people think they're hiding their sins from God, but they're not. God knows, and listen, God will reveal it. He'll make it known, and sometimes through the spirit of discerning and many other ways, God brings the sins out, whether it be through me or any man or woman of God. <clears throat> be assured, if you listen to this program and you're a hypocrite, you're going to be made known because your fruit's going to tell what kind of tree you got, man. Not saying that everyone that don't come back is in sin. No, but I do know that the enemy comes in and out and pops all around the programs and then tries to twist the words that we say. The truth is, when we stand up for the truth, like it or not, believe it or not, just like Jesus, we're going to be hated by the world. Most of the time, even my family members get madder than hell is hot at me because I stand on the word of God. I stand on the truth. And they wait on me to fall so they can point their finger. You know, it's kind of like, man, you can feel the, the prayers of, of the, um, well, I can, of hundreds of people that disagree with the, the truth. And, and it's like they're just waiting like a vulture to eat you up, you know. But, but it, you know, it doesn't matter because the truth is not going to be hindered. God's will will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. And we do miss some of the familiar faces that stop by. We, we do miss those uh, that stop in and, and pray for us. We miss those faces when they're not 
uh, showing up at least once a month, you know, or once a, once a week is a pretty good average. But those of you that follow us regular, you know, we, we started off sharing everything good, bad, pretty, and ugly, and we still do. We've not changed. They change. They change when they get mad. They change when they pout. They change when they disagree. They change if you call them out on something instead of repenting and moving on with it. They they pout and get puffed up, withhold their givings, withhold their fellowship, withhold their presence, and uh, you know, and then they claim to be born again. Like it or not, believe it or not, <laughs> it's the truth. It's the truth. Your fruit will tell on you, and God does make your sins known. There's no secret thing with God. He'll bring it into the light, my friend. And that is the truth. And we love everyone that stopped by, that 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 is still hanging in there faithful with us. And, you know, God showed me that if I'll stand on the truth, you know, and, and just, just do what he's called me to do, just like Job in the end, <laughs> Woo, man, you can't describe the blessings of God. There's, listen, it's better felt than it is told. I can't even begin to tell you how wonderful that God has opened up the windows of heaven and poured out his blessings upon me and my family. I can't even begin to describe it. I can't tell you. I'm 54 years old. I'm not on no meds, no medicine. If that ain't God, then I don't know what love is. Do you hear me? Not bragging on me. I'm bragging on Jesus, my friend. Don't try to twist my words through your little messages. I'm standing up and telling you that God's good and that if we'll walk upright before God, he'll withhold no good thing from his children. That's the word of God. If you don't like it, hey, don't let the don't let the door hit you where the good Lord split you on your way out. Because the truth is the truth. The truth is the truth. And the truth is God wants to bless you. He wants to bless you and your family. But you've got to count the cost. Are you willing to stand up? Are you willing to stand up? Are you willing to reach out and help others? You know, I mean, don't don't help me. I've asked for help and begged for help. Don't help me. Don't don't come and help me. I just want those that God sends to help. I just want those that's got. I'm not asking for help, but I'm telling you, the Word of God says, if a brother asks you to go a mile, you'll go twine. You know, it, it is sad in today's world that if we don't pacify those that call themselves Christians, those that call themselves brothers and sisters in the body of Christ. Notice, I did say call themselves that because that's the truth. It's the truth. If, if, if it's simply the truth. And the truth will stand when the world's on fire. All right, guys, we're going to swap the program around just a little bit. Uh, I really want to share some songs with you that uh, one of my favorite uh, singing groups is Brother Urban Taylor. Those of you that know me know that I love his music. I love his anointing. I love the fact that God just rolls all over him. He's got one of the most awesome lifing spirits Um you know, it, it's just awesome when God gets a hold of him. Just hold on, all I can tell you. I mean, that's that's the truth. You just got to hold on. Amen. But uh, he had shared some videos and uh, of him and his family singing, and that's so precious because to see uh, one of my pastors, uh, David Taylor, uh, there and his sister and Brother Irvin, and my God, and, and uh, it was just so awesome. Uh, to see the love of God really flowing from breast to breast. I want to thank Brother Urban Taylor for sharing those. And, uh, Brother, we do appreciate you and your family. No matter what you've heard, no matter what you say, no matter what nobody else says, I can tell you from the horse's mouth that we pray for you daily, that we love you and thank God for you. And, and as far as anything else, <laughs> Amen. Um, you have to take that up with God. <laughs> That's all I can tell you, brother. But we love you. Also, uh, I want to thank God for the faithful ones that do stop by and make their presence known, even if it is just for a second, clicking in and clicking out. At least you took the time out to stop by and let me know and say, hey, we're praying for you and the ministry. We do desire your prayers. We really, really do. 
you know, uh, because this ministry is at war. We're at war with the devil and his legions of angels. It's uh, Listen, we're not fighting flesh and blood. We're fighting the devil and, and principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places. We stand up against the, the false prophets. We stand up against a false doctrine. We stand up against a lie. We stand up against hypocrites, yeah, and liars. We stand up and tell you the truth. If, if, if homosexual, if you're living in a homosexual lifestyle, unless you repent and you meet death in sin, you cannot be where Jesus is. We stand up against ISIS and what they're doing. And now they got a thing saying, you know, um, if you say the name of Jesus that now out loud, they just cut your head off. Well, ISIS, listen to me. Jesus is my personal Lord and Savior. Jesus, 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 Jesus. It don't matter what you're doing. God has the victory. God is the victory. Do you hear me? I says we come against you and your evil entree. We speak the word of God of protection over those Christians over there in those foreign countries that are being attacked for the gospel's sake. We stand with our brothers and sisters as we claim victory over their country in the name of Jesus Christ, our precious Lord and Savior. But if Jesus offends you, then let me say it again. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. If the truth offends you, let me say it again. The truth is a lot of people want their ears tickled. And, and but, you know, as long as you pat them on the back and tell them they're doing okay and tell them everything's all right, man, they'll fill you building. Man, they'll fill your chat rooms. Man, they'll, they'll click on your likes on Facebook. Man, they'll eat you up. But just as sure as you say something that st- hits their toes, they get madder and hell is hot. They pout, withhold and cry and whine and complain. My God, grow up if you want to go up. Listen, we're running out of time. And their souls hanging in the balance. People's watching what you're doing. They're listening to what you're saying. Now, if you say you love Christ, then you will keep the words of God. And you will apply them in your life. If you say you love him and you keep not his commandments, my friend, you are a liar. The truth. Like it or not, believe it or not, the truth. What are you going to do with Jesus? Hey.
man. All right, guys. Going to have to say good night and God bless. Know that we love you as we stand upon the word and the promises of God for you and your family and your situation. Whatever you may be facing, the truth is you don't have to face it alone. What are you going to do with Jesus? We pray that if you listen to the program and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, that you would reach out and take a hold of the unchanging hand of the great I Am. Now know that if you reject Jesus, then you're condemned already. We're praying for you. I believe you're going to do the right thing. There's hope for the hopeless. There's hope for the drug addicted and the alcoholic those that living in homosexual and lesbian lifestyles, there's hope for the liar. There's hope for the hypocrite. There's hope, and his name is Jesus Christ. Come to that place and realize you're a sinner in need of a Savior and reach out. Run to God with a broken heart and a contrite spirit, my friend. He'll in no wise cast you out. What are you going to do with Jesus? Where will you spend eternity? That is what it's come down to. Listen, you don't have the promise of the next breath you are to take, my friend. None of us do. And if old man death was to call your number, will you hear Jesus say, enter in or depart from me? You know where your relationship is with God. If you've got sin in your life, repent and quit doing it. Jump on the potter's wheel. God will shape you. We love you. We'll see you next time right here at the Gospel Music Jukebox. The splendor of heaven, knowing his destiny was the lonely hill of Golgotha, there to lay down his life. Then he took him to pass.